pretty confident that the work in this area can pay big results. And we're using as a model a very successful uh, initiative under the previous administration headed by President Bush, which focused on HIV AIDS, the President's Emergency Plan, uh, better known as PEPFAR. The PEPFAR, in its relatively few years of existence, has already provided life-saving treatments to about two and a half million people across um, the nations with HIV AIDS. And it has been very bipartisan in its efforts. And Part of the President Obama's new initiative is to make PEPFAR even stronger. Um, for example, when we go into a country to deal with an HIV AIDS uh, epidemic, we're often located in areas where there are very few other health services. So we have an opportunity to establish a footprint and deliver important services. But in other countries, who are working already to establish frontline primary care, what we want to make sure is that our HIV AIDS efforts are uh, not isolated, but integrated into those mainline uh, health efforts. So we're making special steps to make sure that we can bring our assets to bear and that whether somebody is there for treatment of a wound or having a baby or treatment for AIDS, that the medical personnel and supplies and equipment, the kind of health footprint we can help develop in some of those countries are actually integrated into the primary health system. Um, we know that it's important to leave behind a, an infrastructure for health services to be delivered on into the future, and it's one of the things that um, we feel strongly about, that it's not just dropping in with some assets from America, but actually building an infrastructure, training a workforce, getting, empowering uh, the nationals who live in various countries to actually step up and fill the role of ongoing health services. Uh, a feature of the President's Global Health Initiative will be uh, the emphasis on women's health. Um, one of the, um, prior efforts was, was clearly, um, while it was aimed at HIV AIDS, we understand that a key to improving the prosperity in developing countries is to focus on the health and well-being of women and girls. Women are the primary caregivers, and often delivering women's health services make sure that children also have health services. It passes good health down to the next generation. Childhood mortality declines, and in way too many countries across this globe, women are still subjected to a very particularized abuse and mistreatment, and girls are all often denied access to basic care and treatment. So currently, in spite of the huge payoff from investments in women's health, women and girls around the world get fewer health services than men. Half a million women a year die from pregnancy or pregnancy-related causes. 500,000 women each and every year. And we believe that improving women's health, the benefits will multiply throughout society. So one of the goals of the new Global Health Initiative, for instance, is to reduce maternal mortality by 30%. Just that step would save about 360,000 lives a year, more than all the people who were killed in the recent earthquake in Haiti. Uh, and just one more of a dozen ambitious targets that are part of this Global Health Initiative. Now, I've only been secretary uh, for 10 years, and I have to tell you, I'm still struggling a little bit with this title. I'm now Madam Secretary. I would have never been hired by a secretary for anything because I frankly don't type very well and don't have any of the skills. And I never wanted to be a madam, and now I'm both. And I still can't quite get over that. But uh, in spite of the odd uh, title, I have been here only 10 months. Um, and now I'm dealing with the second international crisis uh, in that 10 month period of time, and that's the uh, 
devastating earthquake in Haiti and the aftermath that has hit uh, the people of Haiti. Uh, the entire response so far is based on the kind of whole government approach. We're working with Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and the new USAID Administrator, Dr. Raj Shah, uh, but we've been in constant communication uh, across government on how to make the best possible use of our resources and how to coordinate that effort. Uh, there are now more than 10,000 Americans working in Haiti. Uh, our medical response so far has uh, delivered care to over 27,000 patients, uh, many of whom have had traumatic injuries and would have died absent the kind of care they've been getting. We've repatriated so far about 7,000 American citizens from Haiti who are returning, and our scientists are working rapidly to try and rebuild Haiti's health infrastructure as quickly as possible and deal with food and water safety issues on the ground as we move along. We've got specific responsibilities, not just on the health end, but on the public health side of the picture, but our Agency for Children and Families is uh, involved in the um, children returning to this country who are in an adoption process. And children who arrive in this country without prospective parents are actually in the custody of Health and Human Services. So we're working with patient officials and foreign governments and NGOs and our government partners. But again, an example of you know just this ongoing effort that involves collaborative work. Um, you know, some some good news that our health team has told us that in spite of the tragedy, in spite of the incredible number of deaths and the still dire situation facing a lot of patients. Um, the health team has helped to deliver so far 31 babies, uh, and it's an example of, of the circle of life really continuing and the resilience of the Haitian people and the not notion that with continued help and support, uh, they absolutely will see better days. Now, I just want to mention before I take some of your questions that although I, I haven't spent much time focusing on uh, some of the things that we do in our domestic agenda, let me be clear that while a lot of my time and effort so far has been spent dealing with some of these international situations, um, I've also spent lots of hours on uh, President Obama's priority on uh, health reform. It is a consuming job, an ongoing conversation, one that he has made it very clear we intend to continue until we have a product at the end of the day to provide health care to all of our citizens and help reduce the deficit and lower costs. Um, we're continuing that conversation in part because our recent economic news says that our healthcare is now consuming 17% of the GDP of the United States, well above what any other developed country is spending. And uh, we, frankly, live sicker, die younger, and spend more than any nation on earth for healthcare. And we need to uh, figure out a different system that works better for all of us. Um, so I continue the conversations globally with our partners, but I also look forward to the learning from them about uh, how in Denmark, for instance, they spend an average of $3,700 a person compared to our $7,200 per capita on health care and achieve far higher health results than we have here in America. We talked to the Germans this morning about the <laughs>